welcome to the Ladybug Laboratory Podcast. My name is Lily and I will be your host for today. Um, I would like to start by giving a giant, giant thank you to everybody that's watching, whether it's for the first time or whether you're a returning viewer. I really appreciate it and it's humbling every, every single time I record to realize that people come watch me talk about knitting. Yeah. Um, this is the third attempt that I have made to record this podcast. I tried to record it yesterday and it was very, very hot out and I had almost had a heat stroke because I'd been in the sun all day and I was very out of it. I looked at all the footage and I was like, I can't even tell what I'm talking about half the time. So I decided to re-record it today, which by the way is Monday, September 19th. Um, it is very hot out still, but it's not as bad, so I do have the fan on me. I hope that it's not too much white noise, um, but it's totally worth it. I can't handle life without it right now. And then, I am in a new location, and the reason for that is because of the fan, but I'm sitting on the floor, and I've tried a new filming technique, so hopefully I'm looking at the camera more often, but it does mean that I did not know that the camera shut off four minutes into my recording. Yeah. So here I am. Welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast all about mostly knitting, a little bit of sewing, cross-stitch, other craftiness. Um, I post every other week, usually on a Sunday or a Monday, unless there is an exception. And I'm glad you're all here today. Um, this week, I'm not wearing anything that I've made because hot. Today we are going to go over works in progress, finished objects, a tiny bit of sewing. Don't get your hopes up, guys. I know you're helping to see the Miss Frizzle dress and you're not. I'm sorry. Um, some mail call, a little bit of housekeeping, books, knit-alongs, and prattle. So let's jump right in to works in progress. My first work in progress this week is living in my mama made waffles bag, which has the little foxes on it and the delightful handle. And that is, depending on the mood that I'm in, my amethyst diamonds socks or my brother border socks. And this is the border socks pattern on Ravelry. It is a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to give much away. But I have a hoe, a half finished object. So these socks are collar work. This is the first time that I've done collar work socks. And as you can probably guess, they are for my brother since I sometimes call them my brother border socks. Um, the I did adapt a little bit from the pattern and I don't want to give too much away, but I made the cuff a little bit longer. So in the pattern, it's about an inch and I did it about three inches. I also um, changed the colors. So in the pattern, it's blue instead of purple and brown instead of black. But my brother loves hand knit socks and I was sending him a bunch of Ravelry patterns because he likes them to be quirky and unique. He doesn't like boring socks, but he also needs to be pretty professional for his job. He has to be able to wear them with, you know, black slacks and dress shoes. So I sent him the border socks pattern and he said that he loved it, but he didn't really wear blue or brown. What he wears is purple and black and I knew that. And so when I took, we went and met up with him in March at a surprise birthday party for my uncle and there was a local yarn store nearby and I took him to it and I said pick out a purple and he picked out this purple Cascade Heritage which I just love. Um, I bought a white Cascade Heritage while I was there and I already had the black in stash so that is what these are. You've already seen this purple in my stained glass blanket if you've been a viewer for a while. Um, these socks have been a nightmare and not because of the pattern, because of me. I made the cuff, I took it on the go and realized that I had forgotten the larger needles because you need larger needles for the color work. Got home, finished the color work, did the foot, got to about here. On Saturday, I had to go to a D&D &D meeting and when I'm at D&D, &D, I usually like something that's stockinette or rib, something that's really simple that I can do a little bit brainlessly because I want to be really engaged. Um, so I brought these. I finished the sock and I started the toe, at which point I realized, shoot, the toe is supposed to be color work. So I looked in my bag and realized I hadn't brought the black or the white yarns with me. I, I have no idea what I was thinking. So while I was looking in the bag, I'm going to scooch forward a little bit, camera angle is a little weird. While I was looking in the bag, um, and I realized this, I 
Uh, I had also brought with me my cozy memory stained glass blanket and the reason for that is basically I was running out the door and I knew I would get to the color work section and I thought it might be a little bit too brain for me so I figured if I got there I could just work on cozy memories. Um, so I had some scrap yarn from that. I put this on scrap yarn, set it aside, and what I did is I cast on, let me find it, I cast on the cuff for the second sock. So I did that, that night I came home and I took the scrap yarn from, that I had put the first sock on and wove it into the cuff as I took the needles out of the cuff to finish the toe on the first sock. So then I had this cuff on scrap yarn and Sunday morning I went into the city and I was in there for like 10 hours and I was driving and taking the train and all this stuff so I brought all my knitting with me at this time I remembered to bring both my needles I brought all of my stitch markers and my scissors and my darning needles even though I knew I probably would not use those and I brought all three colors of the yarn and I got on the train and I realized that the thing that I had left at home was the cuff So, I probably spent more time than it was worth figuring out how to jerry-rig this, so I basically cast on with the white, did like three rows, and then I kept going with the ribbing, and my plan is to frog the white, do through to the end of the color work, and then kitchener these together. I don't know if it's going to be worth it. I only have like an inch of ribbing in here. We'll see. We'll see when I get there. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to be working on these in the upcoming week because of my second work in progress. Okay, so my next work in progress is my Grandma Lily sweater. Um, and for those of you that have been longtime viewers of the podcast, you know that I'm making a sweater for my grandma whose mom's name was Lily. This is um, made out of Miss Babs Yummy 2 ply in the stonewashed colorway. It is beautiful. This is my third attempt at it and I'm not going to go into all the details again for those of you that have seen it before but basically my grandma's going through a rough time. Her mom used to make them sweaters. Her mom's name was Lily who I'm named after. I'm making her sweater just as a tangible response of, uh, to show that I love her. And uh, she is a large woman, she is bigger than the biggest size of the pattern, which means when I bought for the biggest size of the pattern I didn't buy enough, I needed more dye lots, I did my math wrong, yada yada, hopefully third time's the charm, and these will work. This is the cuff of a sleeve. I need to get both sleeves done by the end of September, I'll do the body in October, the yoke in November, and the sticking and button band in December, hopefully, to get it out on time, which means I need to do two sleeves in two weeks, and I'm terrified. So yeah, that's why my border socks won't be getting much work. You'll notice that I love working in the round on two smaller circular needles, and the ones that I'm using here are the Addy Turbo Sock Rockets. Um, I, those are a 3.5 inch needle, and a lot of people have said that they prefer the longer needle. So I got, let me see if I can, I got these, which are Addy Turbos, and they're rockets, they're not sock rockets, in the appropriate um, size for the body of the sweater. And I'm going to see if I like those. If I do, that would be good to know because I can expand my needle repertoire. Um, so that is my Grandma Lily project. And next up is my stained glass blanket, which is living in my brand new stu whoops studio in the green project bag, which I love, and you will hear more about later. Um, last time that you saw this, I had done 31 squares, and I said, don't let me come back having done more than two. And I sort of did that. The first one that I'm going to show you guys today that's new is this Emiliana square, which is this cream and red one. They're both Miss Babs Yummy 2-ply in the russet colorway and in the naked yarn. Um, I made a shawl out of them called Emiliana, which is why I named it that, and I actually used up all of the russet. So I kind of like the color blocking, but I don't know if I'll do it very often. The second one is with my Portland plaid yarn, and this is from my Portland plaid socks, for those of you that remember. The th then, so that was my two, and then when I was on the way out the door to go to D&D &D and I had brought my socks, I realized that I might get to the color work. So I thought, 
well, what if the color work is too intense? What if I can't do it? I don't want to waste my knitting time. But I didn't have anything else set up that I could bring with me easily. I didn't have the needles yet for the Grandma Lily cardigan, and that's really all I had on the go, so I just grabbed my project bag on the way out the door as a last minute thought. And I'm glad that I did, because it enabled me to not only do more work on my socks, but actually get some stuff done. So I did two squares while I was there. The Crelando square, and this one, which is yarn from David of This Boy Knits podcast, and this is the yarn formerly known as the Frozen Dancing Mermaid. And those are both from my mini skein swap with Eva of Eva Christie Hand Knitting. And I just want to say, Eva, your podcast, you are so sweet, and just thank you so much for everything. And it really, you really did just bring tears to my eyes. Thank you. Thank you for being so kind and so sweet and always being there for everybody. And I have been so lucky to get to connect with you. And even if I never podcast again, it was worth it. Just just to get to know you and thank you so much for reaching out to me and being amazing as always and you guys if you don't watch Eva Christie of the Eva Christie hand knitting podcast you should because she's wonderful she's wonderful she's an amazing human being and she does great work and I look forward to watching every single one of her podcasts so yeah go check her out and thank you thank you Eva truly you're the best so those are my works in progress for this week and now we're going to move on to finished objects. So today I only have one finished object and a lot of you guys can probably guess what this is. That is the sun tag from Eva's Durbaville Along, which is where you read the Tess of the Durbervilles book and you knit a sun tag. So last time that you saw this, I had knit the body. Then I had added these two wings and I had begun to put a garter tab on the bottom as a strap. And I hadn't decided if I was going to do an I-cord border around it. I had knit one side of the garter, I had applied it across the bottom, and then I had gotten to, I don't know, about here, okay? I took the progress keeper out when I podcasted the first time last night when it was terrible. So, and I did end up deciding to do an I-cord border and I'm so glad that I did. Number one, it shrunk the sides considerably and it actually made them the perfect length, but it also made it so much sturdier. It's not, it's stretchy and it's comfortable, but it's not so stretchy anymore. It's not like strung out to a very thin length and it just gives it such a nice finish. I just, I love it. I hope this is focusing. So, um, I did that. I finished that up. And basically what I did is I attached the I-cord here. And then I went around and just applied it and picked it up as I went. Went around the corner. All the way across the bottom. Back around the corner. And then back to the edge there. And the only other thing that I added was this button. And this was a button that I found a tutorial for online that I'll link in the show notes. Um, it does have a real button under there. I just covered it in yarn, but I'm really happy with it. So for those of you that don't know, I'm just going to demonstrate how to put this on and you better believe that I love you because it's still crazy hot out. So here we go. Um, first up, you put it over the back. Ooh, it's got stuck on my hair. So the wings are over your shoulders and the back portions on the back. Okay. Then you adjust so that the belty section is right where you want it. And you tie the belt into the front. So you have this strap where you want it, you have the back piece, and then you have your shoulder straps. And what you do is you just cross them over each other. And then there's these two buttonholes in the ends of each strap. So you put them in the back on that button, and it's the same button for both of them. And after you've put them on the button, you are wearing your sun tag. Okay? It is a little bit big for me, but that's okay because it's for my mother-in-law and she's a little bit bigger than me. So this is how it fits. Um, I'm actually really happy with it. It's soft and it's very stretchy but also cozy at the same time. Like even for me, it feels warm even though it's like big and there's space here. Actually, it feels so I'm taking it off. But <laughs> 
I'm really, really happy with how this came out. So I'm going to send this out to my mother-in-law. Her birthday is tomorrow, um, but she's not going to get it for her birthday, obviously, because it won't get there in time. But I will send it as a birthday gift because she requested it last year as a birthday gift. And usually I only do one hand knit gift, especially something of this size, per year, whether it's birthday or Christmas. And the whole family's getting Christmas this year, so I think I'll just give her a deep pillar or something. But um, she did request it for her birthday because she does work at a historical museum, and their big event that is outdoors happens before Christmas. So, I mean, she's outdoors all summer, but their winter event that is outdoors happens before Christmas. So I am going to try and get this to her and just sort of say birthday slash early Christmas, hope you like it. I really hope she does like it. It's it's beautiful. It was a lot of work, but it was worth it, and I'm really happy with the end product. So that is my finished object for today, and at this point, we're going to move on to sewing. So super quickly, I did not get much sewing done today, but I did do a, or this, <laughs> these two weeks, but I did do a little bit of sewing. and. Those of you that have tuned in before, you know that I have a kitty cat, his name is Bodhi, he sleeps under the bed all day and he's scared of everything, but he comes up on the bed at night. Well, during the day, what he sleeps on is one of those, like, big canvas, almost like a plasticky canvas, containers that you put sheets in, like a zip container. And last week, he was really stressed. He was throwing up, he wasn't eating, he was peeing on the floor, like behavior that I hadn't seen in him before. And we couldn't figure it out. We couldn't figure it out. He wouldn't come on the bed. He wouldn't groom himself. And one night as we're falling asleep, Randall looks at me and he says, I wonder if something's wrong with his sleeping place, his, you know, his, his bed under our bed. And I, I mean, it was brilliant. That would, that would clearly stress a cat out. And I hadn't gone in there and gotten the sheets out from any, changed the sheets, but I just washed them and put them back on the bed. I didn't switch them since we got him because I didn't want to disturb it. So the poor kitty was traumatized for a day last weekend. We took everything out. We vacuumed under the bed. He was scared hiding under the couch. We put everything except his bed thing back because he had thrown up on it. And there was like a bunch of litter tracked there just over time. It was not poor kitty. So I cleaned it all off with a nice lavender pet cleaning thing. And one of the things that I had in there was a sheet, a king size sheet that we have never used. Um, it, we got our bedding from Randall's aunt and uncle who were downsizing from king to queen. And we have a queen size mattress, but we use king because it's, it's big. Anyway, sheet came with it. We've never used it. So I took that sheet. I folded it in thirds. Yeah, thirds one way so that it was like a long skinny thing. And then I folded it in half the long way, so the fold was here, and I just sewed two seams up the edges. And I made essentially a little slip cover for his thing. And I put it on, tried to put it back under the bed. He hissed and moaned and cried. And he was a little afraid of it for about an hour because it, it was a totally different color. It went from white to like a dark maroon. Um, but after he got back on it, he was so happy. In less than a day, he was back to his normal self, eating, sleeping, grooming himself, everything. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad that we figured it out and it, it was satisfying to get back on the sewing machine for a little bit even though I don't really have much time to do that right now and basically the reason for that is Christmas knitting, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. It was nice to do. I'll pop some pictures in here of both his old um, sleeping place and his new one if I haven't done so already. And that's it for sewing. So now we're going to move on to mail call. So for mail call today, I have two main things that I want to show you. And I'll show you the one that came in the mail first. So this one is my brand new project bag by Studio in the Green with these kitties on it. And first up, I just want to show you these kitties because they are adorable. Look at that. So I saw this and I could not resist. It was a little bit more expensive as far as project bags go, but it is totally worth it because if you look on the inside, first of all, there's this beautiful like golden dandelion-ish pattern. And on each side, there are two feeders for yarn. So for a colorwork project, you can have four colors, two up each side. 
they're snaps, so you can remove your work at any time and you're not stuck with it in this bag. Um, and then down the center, let me see if I can, is a little notions pouch with a zipper. So I'll try and tilt this actually. So what I have in here, let's see, I don't know if you can see that, but what I have in here is my cozy, my stained glass blanket. And on one side are all my minis, on the other side is the blanket itself, and then in the middle are my scissors, my needles, everything that I need to work on it. So I love this bag. It's easily become my favorite bag as soon as it arrived. I was just like cuddling it. It's wonderful. I could not be happier with this bag. If you ever have a chance to get something from Studio in the Green, I highly recommend it because this is very well made and there is no nothing I can complain about in this bag. And the other acquisition that I have for today is also a project bag, and that is my Lone Larch project bag. This is by Jenny of the Lone Larch podcast and Lone Larch Designs on Etsy. Um, this is actually a prototype bag. So she showed this on her podcast and asked if people would be interested in it, and it's basically like so that you can knit when you're in line or walking, which I do all the time, and I thought this design was brilliant. But on top of that, this fabric, oh my gosh, I fell in love with this fabric. So I immediately sent her a message on both Etsy and on YouTube and said, please, 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 let me buy that from you. Just the prototype. I just want the prototype. I want that fabric. And she did, thankfully. So the outside is flannel. The inside is cotton. It has a little pocket on the inside. And she's still adjusting it. It's not going to be out for mass production for a while, but I am so glad to have this, even if it's just a prototype, because I love it. I could not be happier. The moment that I saw this, I knew it had to come home with me. So thank you, thank you, Jenny, for letting me take this home with me, take this bag. I hope you got all the information that you needed from it before you sent it to me, but it's amazing. Thank you, because I'm not giving it back. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. I love, love, love love this bag. So yeah, those are my mail call acquisitions for today. And <coughs> excuse me. And at this point I want to move on to a little bit of housekeeping. So a couple of things. I totally forgot to say where you could find me. I am ladybug.lily on Instagram and ladybuglily on Ravelry. You can find the podcast as on the groups in Ravelry as the Ladybug Laboratory podcast. And speaking of that, there is a thread in there to introduce yourself, please go ahead and do so, as well as a 200 subscriber giveaway thread. So I'm going to extend the giveaway for at least another two weeks, at least until my next podcast. Um, and only a few people have entered in it, so all you have to do to enter in the giveaway is go into that thread and comment, respond to the prompt, and you'll be entered to win. Um, so you have some really good chances right now because not many people have entered. This is probably going to be one of the only random giveaways that I do. I'll probably do some knit along giveaways, but I, I was just overjoyed to even know that people liked sitting there watching me talk about knitting, which I find strange to begin with, although I love my podcasters, so I don't know why. Um, but I really don't want to become gimmicky about always doing giveaways. And I, I love giving gifts. It's one of my favorite things to do, but I, I don't want to feel like I'm tricking people into watching the podcast. So after this, it's probably just going to be for knit alongs, which I might do some knit alongs soon. But um, for now, I just wanted to show you guys the uh, prizes for the giveaway. So you will be getting uh, a couple of things. Number one, you will be getting a little notions case from Selkie Studio. I ordered some more from her, and these are just little, they slide, they're very adorable. I keep my stitch markers in them. So I ordered some more from her, um, and I ordered four, and I'm going to be giving one of those to the winner, and I'm going to allow the winner to choose the pattern that they like, because they're all different patterns. And you will also be getting a project bag and this is going to be one of the Dancing Sheep Socks project bags. I have two colors for you to choose from. I have light blue and sage. 
Um, they are both exactly the same. They are both made the same way, the same level, but I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to pull a wool over your eyes. This is my project bag that I've had for about a month. I think I've used it twice, okay? Um, I have washed it, I have ironed it. There are no rips or tears or, I don't know, coffee stains or anything. It's just like new, but it is technically used. Um, but I really love both of these colors. Honestly, I'm kind of, I'm kind of leaning toward the sage right now, but I can't tell if that's just because it's the new one in my eyes. But I figured I would get the sage and then I would allow the winner to choose which color that they liked and which one they wanted. Um, I like them both. Like I said, right now I like the sage. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if you win, you get to choose which one of these you want. And they're both amazing. This is one of my favorite project bags. Um, and I'm also going to throw in there some extra little goodies, probably some stitch markers and tea bags and stuff like that. So uh, go ahead and enter in the giveaway. Um, another piece of uh, housekeeping is I wanted to touch on a forum that I posted in the Ravelry group a couple of days ago about a mini skein swap. And I am planning to host a mini skein swap because swapping with Eva made me realize that I absolutely love doing mini skein swaps. So um, I'm going to host two. And one of them is going to be a 10 gram mini skein swap. And then one will be a 5 gram and that will be later. The idea being if you're like me and you only use 5 grams in your blanket, you can participate in the 10 gram swap. And then the 5 grams that are left over you can send on to somebody else for the second swap. But it still gives an opportunity for the people that use 10 grams in their blanket to participate. Um, for this swap, I am going to make a request, and I do ask that you guys respect this. Um, I personally feel very uncomfortable when the expectations are not set for what is to be given. I am very uncomfortable giving or receiving significantly less or more than uh, my recipient. Either way, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. And I don't want anyone to feel that way. I don't want anyone to feel obligated to sort of outdo other gifters. So for both of these swaps, I am requesting that you only send 10 minis. Okay. So it's 10 minis of 10 grams, and then later 10 minis of 5 grams. And you can, of course, add in, you know, little extra things like notebooks and tea bags and whatever you want to make it special. But please don't go overboard because it can make people feel very awkward and very uncomfortable. And I don't want to facilitate that um, on this podcast. So if you would like to participate in either of those mini skein swaps, there is a thread in the forum. I'm going to put do Google forms there. We're going to start with the um, 10 gram swap and all you have to do is fill out the, the Google form. It's basically like name, what kind of yarn do you want, what's your address type of thing. Please put your full name, um, especially if you're international because customs often doesn't do well with not a full name. And please put your full address. I promise it will not go to anybody except me and your partner who's sending you a gift. Um, yeah, so I would love to have people participate in those. The more people we can get, the better. And so go ahead and sign up for that. So that is my housekeeping section. And at this point, we're going to move on to books and finally knit alongs. Okay, this past two, these past two weeks, um, I have read Players, Bumps, and Cocktail Sausages, which is the third book in the series that I talked about before, Silence and Broken Silence. And as I mentioned last time, one of the things that I like about those books is that they deal with trauma in a very real way. So you see, there's not just this magical fix, like you see this sort of fallout of that. Um, and this book centers on the brother of the main characters in the previous two, the main character in the previous two books. Um, and it, I found it fascinating because it explored his relationship with the trauma and how he felt realizing what had happened to his sister and 
in some ways he feels guilty and how that's affecting him now that he's having his own children. Um, just like the other books, it was a little bit kitschy, but I enjoyed it. I did. I really did enjoy it. And I thought it took a look at trauma in a light that we don't often see and needs to be addressed. Um, I haven't read anything else in the past two weeks. I'm considering starting the All, All Souls slash Discovery of Witches books. I've heard some good things about those, and I would love to know what you guys think. If anybody thinks I should or shouldn't read those, please let me know. Um, they sound great to me, but I, I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, and then of course for Knit Alongs, I have evidently finished the D'Urberville Along. Thank you so much, Eva, for organizing that and giving me the kick in the butt that I needed to get this Sontag done, because I could not be happier with it. Um, our Glasgow Subway Knit Along, which is also hosted by Eva Christie. Uh, last time that I spoke to you, oh, this is where you're knitting your way in meterage around the Glasgow subway system. So last time that I spoke to you guys, I had uh, 3,943 meters, which put me at Kelvin Hall. And today I have 4,325 meters, which puts me at Hillhead. So I have moved on to Hillhead. Um, what I did is basically I put in the rest of my meterage from the Sontag because I'd done, anytime I switched balls, I had done that. Um, and I did all my blanket squares as well as my first border sock. As a side note, I forgot to mention this. Um, those of you that were listening to my complaining about slash confusion and conundrum about the dye lots, what I ended up doing is the back sash eye cord and button were all in the original dye lot and then the two front were all in the uh, new dye lot and it actually worked out really well. I, I'm really pleased with the effect that it gives. And the next knit along is my 50 points for Gryffindor knit along. This is where I'm giving myself positive points for finishing things and negative points for buying yarn, essentially. Um, last time I spoke to you guys I had negative 61 points. Um, for those of you that don't remember, I bought a lot near the beginning of the year for um, Christmas gifts, essentially. A lot of stuff at Stitches West, and I'm slowly working my way off of that. Um, so I was at negative 61. I'm now at negative 37, which is a huge jump. Um, I got 17 points for my Sontag, and then one or two for a whole bunch of different squares, which brings me down to negative 37 points. So, some pretty good improvement there. Um, yeah, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about is a, a new section for my knit-along section. And it's actually something I've done for a while. I do this every year. This year I did it sometime around April. Usually it happens sometime between February and June. And I count up how many days are left before Christmas, how many yards I have to knit before that time. And I do some math and figure out how many yards I need to make per day. So this year, I needed to knit 55 yards a day. I took all of the projects that I had to do, and I listed how many yards they were. I'm sure you can't see this. I'm sorry. I listed how many yards they were, and then I divided that by 50. So if it was 350 yards, it was a 7-point project. If it was 6,000 yards, it was a 120-point project, right? And a sec effectively, I need to cross off one of those points per day, okay? Um, except because I need to do 55 yards a day instead of 50, what I ended up doing is, I, I'm doing it in tally marks, okay? So every 50 days, I wanted to do an extra, like, chunk of five tally marks, and that mathed out. So I'm keeping track of the days that have gone by, and of course, how I've knit. Um, I kind of forgot about this for a while and updated it over the weekend, and I'm actually doing better than I usually am this time of year. I'm only 46 tally marks behind, but seeing as I'm already at 160, that's not that much. That's about a third, maybe. A little less than a third, actually, looking at it. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it, and some of the things that are on this list are things that I want to get done, but I don't have to, like my campsite sweater and some blanket squares, but I would love for it to get done, so I have I have some high hopes for this. 
Uh, finally, the last section for today is prattle, and it's going to be a very short prattle section, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, yesterday, I went into the city to go shopping, as I previously indicated, and I got some very, very special stuff. I went to a Victorian steampunk store, and I got myself a corset and a petticoat dress and a skirt, and I am so happy. I could not be happier. Um, I'm so in love with them, oh my goodness. So I'm really happy. I, I went to that store back in January when my best friend came to visit, and I have always wanted to go back and get those things, and I'm so glad that I finally had the chance to. And I guess this whole not buying yarn thing meant I had a lot more money in my personal budget, so there you go. I got myself a corset. Hey, who can complain? So that is my prattle section for today. I don't have too much to talk about. Um, life has been very, very busy because it's the start of the year. You know how it goes. Um, and I have been mostly just knitting. I haven't been doing much sewing or cross stitch as I mentioned before. I am hoping to get back to both of those. Um, I had wanted to finish my cross stitch before the end of the year, but I don't know if that's going to happen realizing how much Christmas knitting that I have to do. So likely what will happen is I will knit and then after I get back from Christmas, I will, you'll mostly see sewing for about a month and then I'll go back to knitting or cross stitch and I, I sort of switch around like that. I'll focus on one more often than another. Um, but for now, I'm really happy with my progress and thank you guys for joining me and for tuning in. I really, really can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, if you liked, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribing is the best way to know when things are posted, especially since I'm posting the tutorials right now. Um, and thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming by. I hope you have a wonderful day, and hopefully I'm way less out of it than I was last time. Bye!